Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. Just recently, a development consultant, Mary Ikoku, was stopped by the Federal Road Safety Corps officials, FRSC, in Abuja for driving with Google Map. According to reports, her car was impounded, and the media practitioner noted that she was placed under arrest by officials of the FRSC. When she asked what her offense was, Mary Ikoku revealed that she was told to show them her phone. Having noticed that she was using Google Map, it was pointed out to her that her offense was driving while using the map. Mary Ikoku's car was impounded and she was fined 4,000 naira. She was also asked to check into a national hospital for mental evaluation for driving using Google Map. Mary Koku, media practitioner and development consultant, joins us now to share her experience. Welcome to The Morning Show. Good morning. Good morning, Mary. Good to have you again on The Morning Good Show. Good morning. Yes, you're welcome. Thank you for Good morning. coming to the program to share your experience uh, with us. What exactly happened? I mean, Tundu has already given an introduction, but what really happened? I mean, you had to pay 4000 Was your phone seized? And have you gone for the uh, mental checkup? as proposed by FRSC. <laughs> well, um, I haven't gone for a mental checkup, um, even though I was billed for that. Um, what really happened? First off, I think it's also very important that we understand that the time that we are in, in this yellow tide, if you see how a lot of uh, road users drive, then you begin to understand the need that we need to also commend the men on the road who are ensuring our safety. Um, that said, my experience uh, two days ago was uh, a very awful one. Um, while I recognize that these guys need to do their job, but in the same vein, I also ask, what is the objective of this job? Uh, of their actions. I was going to, I'm re relatively new in the city, and the only way I can get around is through the use of Google Map. Uh, on that very day, I've always used this since I came to Abuja, and I've never, ever been stopped by anyone. Um, but, and recently we just uh, organized, um, what do you call it, the Womanifesto event, an event that brought Nigerian women from all walks of uh, life to the city of Abuja for three days uh, women's dialogue. If without the Google map, I would never have been able to get around the city and plan that event that became a huge success. Now, on this very day, it w I had an emergency to attend to, and I was heading towards Khor Mohammed. Um, where a turning right would take me to Nanet uh, suit, where people we put in that came for the conference were staying. I needed to resolve some issues with the people. And then at the, there's a traffic light just before the turn off to Nanet suit. And my map was put on right from Guarimpa, where I took off from. At the red light, I was stopped, I stopped at the red light of course, to wait for the, like, the green light so I can continue my journey. So while I was at that red light stationary was when the road safety guy tapped at my window and said, and, and while there, he said, let me see that phone. You need to understand that I was really stationary at this point, and he was talking to me. I appreciate that he was concerned about my safety, I don't have a problem with that. And he said, let me see that your phone. Then I turned the phone around to him. He faced him and he said, ah, Google Map. You are driving with the aid of Google Map. That is a traffic offense. And I'm like, oh my God, because I thought it was a joke, really. Because I hadn't seen the news, because I was busy with my van. I didn't really see there was an e a news around that before, which the commercial had actually rebutted. So I started laughing, and I'm like, you can't be serious. Are you kidding me? And I'm made, I said, can I see your superior? Maybe there's some misinformation here. You're not getting something. I said, I can't get around without map. And then he said, he, the, the team lead came, actually, who was quite a better person. And he said, uh, yes, it's actually an offense to drive, uh, use of phone, whether it's with Google map or call, it is an offense. Uh, that it is distractive driving. And I quite understand distractive driving.
for me as a mother of children and someone who wants to stay alive for her family, I understand distractive driving. So I often will even urge people, I see people driving and make fiddling with their phone and I get insane by that. So I'm somebody who really talk to people to focus. So when, as a law-abiding citizen, you find yourself in such a corner where you are being harassed, I didn't have a problem with being stopped or being asked why I'm using Google but the problem I have, I didn't have a problem listening to the road safety guy. The challenge that I had was really, you know, the, the level where the guy getting into my car, you know, I would deflate your tire, all those kind of activities. It's in this 21st century, I don't think we should be caught up with that. It is, it, it is traumatic. Throughout yesterday, I couldn't go anywhere. I didn't know um, how do I use my map, the thing on the dashboard there, because I've received reports from other people since yesterday, how they were driving and they were pulled over, their, their map was actually on their dashboard. So seeing reports like that, I'm now confused. How do I really make movement? So I decided not to go anywhere yesterday. I was really traumatized. That said, I want to also add that it is not about road safety stopping people. I also want to know, we need to discuss the issues holistically. The road safety guys are doing their job. If you look at section 166 of their act, it says driving, use driving, using phone while driving in any form. In any form means even if it's on your dashboard, I think the lawyers in the house should be able to really dissect that. I don't know. But I had to go to school myself after this uh, experience. But the challenge there is you want to uh, make an arrest. And I asked the guy, I really have an emergency to take care of. Kindly let me go fix my emergency. Give me a big book me for a ticket for whatever offense you feel I have committed. I'm a law abiding citizen. I will come back and pay whatever it is. But let me take care of my emergency. And he said, no, you must follow us to, this, to our station and all of that. And then I got to the station, they impounded my car, they took my car keys, and then I said, okay, if you have my car, why do you need the key? It's the one shouted, deflate her tires, deflate her tires. So all of those things should not be happening in a civil engagement. This is where I have a serious issue with um, the men who um, handled my issue. And I... <laughs> Even this experience has shown me also that there are two sets of levels of people working for the Federal Road Safety Corps. In this, two days ago, I met core, the core in its, you know, real, in, in reality. I met those who work in the offices, the finest core members, core people you can imagine. They were gentle, professional, attended, the, the ones that intervened in the matter, they really showed a different kind of uh, road safety men to me, unlike the ones who I saw on the road. So I'm thinking, beyond even harassing people and stop, uh, uh, you know, arresting people for these offenses, the manner of engagement is also very important. And the road safety really needs to look into this. And if they need to cascade their training on the men on the road, so they stop harassing citizens. You can achieve what you want to achieve without all those harassment. I didn't have a gun. I, mean, I, I, had, I, I was not posing a threat to anybody. I was, I was already saying, give me the ticket if you feel using this Google map is such a grave offense. And I had also expected that what should have happened would have been these guys should have used their discretion. You are speaking to somebody who has told you that he's actually against distractive driving, but calling it my offense, I said, okay, if you see, you say it's an offense, book me, give me this thing, let me go and solve my own problem. Because you have to understand, what is the objective for a uh, Federal Road Safety Corps? Is the objective to correct or the objective is to punish? 
Because throughout yesterday, every work that I had to do two days ago was crumbled. I couldn't, I wasn't useful. I uh, just couldn't be, be productive anymore. Thank you for coming in this morning. You we see? especially appreciate it given the fact that you couldn't go out yesterday and I'm glad you're feeling better. It does sound like you had the most unpleasant of experiences. But we have to ask you at this point, what, having been on the receiving end of this, what do you suggest for FRSC going forward? It's clear that some kind of training is in order because there appears to be some confusion. You referred briefly to a rebuttal that was given. That was regarding the fact that an announcement was made that um, using Google Maps is no longer permissible in Nigeria. And then and a clarification followed that, that the idea is that you can use Google Maps as long as you start using it before your trip, which you said that you did, that you started it when you left Guarimpa. So it's not like you were in the car checking Google Maps. I'd like you to clarify that point. And was the phone in your hand at the time that you stopped at the traffic light, or was the phone in a holder on the dashboard? The phone, the holder isn't strong anymore. The sun in Abuja will naturally, I think what has happened, you see the holder on the glass is adhesive. So when the sun is really hot, it kind of weakens that adhesive and it falls. So at the point it had fallen, so I picked the phone. And don't forget my car was stationary at this point. So it was at that point the road safety guy said, Turn that phone, let me see what, you're, what is in the phone. And I turned it immediately. And he said, ah, you are using Google Map. And I'm not using Google Map like I'm just fixing the map. The map has been in navigation all the way from Guarempa. And when you are also, and, and, and if you look at the, 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 the section 160 that they, 60 they cited, it says even if your map is on the dashboard, I called the guy's attention. I said, you can see what holds my map. My phone calls, I can't even answer phone calls because my, call, my phone is linked to my car Bluetooth. If you know how the, these new cars are, it's, I think what has happened here is we have laws that um, technology has taken over. So maybe you ask what I think should be the solution. I think what we need to do, that the road safety may need to go back to the books and see that that section of the law, if they can tweak it to accommodate uh, technology, because it will be off, almost uh, a, impossible for people to, to move around optimally. Uh, you have people coming to Abuja Newly, they may rent a car, they need to get around. It is this map, or the, any navigation system. And navigation system doesn't even take place only in the phone. Some are already put in your car. So even if the, we are talking about car, destructive driving, so many things that we do, you know, uh, is part of, it connotes uh, destructive driving. If you have a baby in your car, and the baby is crying, you needed to help that baby. It, it, it's all part of uh, distractive driving. Well, Mary, Even tuning your car radio. Mary, yeah. at this driving point, is distractive driving. Mary, at this point, we'll need to take, Mary, at this point, we'll need to take a short commercial break. We'll come back to you after the break and the conversation will continue. Welcome back to the morning show here on the Arise News channel. Still with us is Mary Ikoku, media practitioner and development consultant, who has been sharing her experience uh, with the Federal Road Safety uh, Commission in Abuja over the use, alleged use, of uh, cell phone while driving. Now, uh, Mary, I, I like the point you made about uh, reviewing uh, Section 166 of the Federal Road Safety uh, Commission uh, regulation of uh, 2012 as the uh, citation of that particular regu regulation. Now, you talked about technology, the need to accommodate technology. Yes, I know overseas uh, people uh, use, uh, you know, Google map, they use a uh, navigation map and all of that. But here in Nigeria, the standard practice, in case uh, you have not observed it, is that you get, if you don't know where you are going, you get a motorcyclist 
you know, otherwise known as Okada, to lead you to become your navigator, or you get a cab to drive in front. Maybe uh, that's what the FRSC pre uh, prefers. But your suggestion, I hope that they, they will note it. But are you planning, you know, to sue the FRSC, you know, for the trauma you went through, for the waste of your time, for preventing you from uh, attending to the emergency that you even mentioned uh, to them? Do you plan to sue just to uh, put this further in the public domain and to make an example out of uh, what happened? Because as you said, uh, some other persons have reported that they were even, uh, you know, humiliated uh, more. Uh, they even ended up going to uh, uh, psychiatric hospitals where they had to pay uh, close to 20,000 naira to be certified as a sane. Um, I've received over, over 10 um, requests, uh, people from different uh, people, uh, lawyers and different people asking for me to sue. Um, but I would, those, this, this is an option and I'm weighing my options. Um, but I want to say that this yellow tide uh, the role of the road safety is very important. They, keep, they need to keep our roads safe for road users. So, suing them will also be decided by the aftermath of... Um, I, right now, I still have um, my application for a waiver for the mental evaluation, emotional evaluation, um, because I feel that you want to wa waiving that emotional evaluation will also determine the next step for me. I don't believe that an insane person can use Google Map or any such navigational aid. A mad person cannot even co co understand what the map is saying. And only an insane person will get to the middle of the road and park and start asking, Oga, which way to Asorok? Which way to Asokoro? I think that um, what the road safety is doing will encourage people to just be parking anyhow on the road and be asking for direction. I think we need to move forward from that. I, I am weighing my options. It is a possibility, but so far, it's been so good with the men of the road safety. Like I said before, they've been a group of road safety officials that I have met that I must say gave me a very good impression of the cop. They took over my case and got my car out and have also led me to the uh, headquarters to apply for that waiver. Because sometimes I think they also have appreciated my challenges, as it were. So you have people who, in the, in the road safety, who are genuinely and very professional. So we cannot overlook the hard work of those people. So training of the road safety men on our roads, on civil engagement, and how to have a relationship, manage people that they find on the road, especially when those people do not pose any threat to, to the community or society or to them. It is very important. And I think that they should also invest more on ensuring that the use of hands-free is what should be drummed for people. And it should find its way in the law that use of hands-free should become legalized because that section 166 actually even precludes use of uh, hands-free. So let them focus on getting that done so that people can even call and receive, uh, can even receive calls while driving. You may have an emergency, but you should be able to do that with the use of your hands free and not have to hold the phone because you can be speaking to somebody while driving. It is also distracting. Even the, our footballers or students who are in the vehicle going on a, a, a competition or match and they are singing and clapping to motivate themselves, it is in car distraction. So all of those things form distraction, but to what extent are these uh, traffic offenses that would attract this kind of fine and mental uh, examination? And over time, they've been sending people, look at the message that I 
forwarded to you, which was a chat, somebody who had been pained by the activities meted out on her, was that the, even she went to National Hospital and the uh, Federal Hospital, and she was asked to pay fifteen to 20000 depending on where you go to. And that the conversation she had with the doctor, that one even said, why do they keep sending to us people that are sane to try them for, 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 for mental or emotional check? So the, I think the NY, uh, FRSC may need to take a, a, a good feedback from those hospitals to know what quantity or what percentage of the people they book in for these referrals to mental check or emotional check come return having mental uh, issues. Those feedbacks will help them maybe to change the strategy and have better tactical action plans to you know, deal with these issues. So if, if a doctor is already complaining that they keep sending them people who are, I think it's not good, they may need to really have a, a kind of review and take feedback mechanism to, to really set, uh, uh, to, to set a better standard and, and, and that doesn't really say that the FRSC, I mean, if you know how some of us drive, you would understand why the role of the FRSC is very important, especially in this yellow tide. If you see the kind of accidents that happen on our roads, you will know that we can never, for any reason, wish away their importance on our roads. Absolutely. So I think it's just about... Yeah. You're not talking about Tactical abolition, you're talking and about re-strategizing. Yes, and you're talking about what they call Operation yes. Cobra, because you're in good company. Apparently, 7,000 people have been referred for mental evaluation at their own cost. And from the message that you got, imagine 7,000 people paying between 15 to 20,000 naira. I mean, it's ridiculous. And now let's also ask this other question. It's quite a delicate question, but I have to pose it. It's the Yuletide season, as you said, and even on this show, we've talked about police checkpoints springing up randomly and attempts to extort cash from motorists. Was there at any point an attempt to extort money from you, or did you get the impression that if you just gave 500 naira or whatever it was, the whole thing would go away? With police or with Rosetti? With the FRSC during your um, encounter with them. No, there was there was no um, such. Uh, the, in fact, there there was even no opportunity for that because uh, the engagement with them was it was it's such a short form. There wasn't any demand from me for from any of the the men. It was just the unprofessional style, rubber dove style of handling citizens that I, if I can be traumatized, I don't know what the, all the people who are sending me messages about my plight, what the hor horrific experience that they may have had. Some road safety men came, intervened in my case, and I had to even update my friends that this matter has been resolved. And some also, it took the intervention of road safety personnel also to, to, solve, to resolve the matter. So no, there was no uh, any attempt to me or 500 naira or That's 50 naira or any such. Well, Mary, uh, with this experience that you had, uh, will you at any time soon uh, still use a Google map or use a hands-free when you are driving, knowing that, you know, you could be, uh, you know, uh, rearrested again by the FRSC, uh, maybe another set of officers in another part of town, or you have been so traumatized you will not even bother to use Google map again? You know, they, they have my license. If it, I won't even need it. Because this morning, I had to beg my husband to bring me here. I couldn't even bring myself to drive to That's this so place. Unfair. I had That's to so be driven, <laughs> you know. So a trauma, the trauma is real, I yes. must say. It's very real. Because that whole picture of somebody jumping into my vehicle, I would deflate your tire. You need to be checked in for mental check. And I'm looking at him. I'm like, me and you, really, who needs to be? Look at me. <laughs> Which of us should be checked in? You know? <laughs> because it, it, took his, it took his team lead, really. The team lead will come and say, please, uh, I'm in charge. Take, stay off this matter. 
But even at that, they still show themselves. So honestly, a lot of training, a lot of talking to. I don't even mind volunteering to provide some effective communication training for, the, for, the, for them. I, I, it could be my own contribution because the, the, the citizens, I, I, this is for one miracle, could there are a thousand and million other citizens who may not have any voice, who may go through worse experience than me. So it is important that we get it right at all level. And I believe that uh, the road safety would have been reading about all of these stories and I don't think they would just be folding their hands and not doing anything about it. Well, thank you. And for giving such a balanced account on what went right in that encounter and what went horribly wrong, particularly the bullying approach that was taken. It was completely unnecessary. Well, thank you very much, uh, Mary Koko. I it hope that uh, the FRIC, you know, will get the opportunity uh, to take note of all the things you have said. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs>